Do you want to sit up here with me? Come on. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is April. I make a lot of nursing content, lifestyle content. I got my start on TikTok. I have um, some followers there. And then I started, I've been on YouTube for years, I feel like, but on and off, I've always loved YouTube. But I've been super consistent the last year. And this week, because it's like the week of Thanksgiving, I just kind of felt like I wanted to do a sit down video. I like to switch it up on my channel every now and again. So we're gonna do a sit down Q&A. I asked you guys to ask me questions that you wanted me to answer on TikTok. I maybe should have done it on Instagram, but like Instagram for me just feels super weird. Like there's like people who follow me from my high school days, people from, you know, that I went to college with, people in my everyday life. And it's not so much like, like I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I just feel like Instagram is a weird app for me personally. So I'm going to answer these questions. I have them on my phone. I took screenshots, but I just wanted to do like a brief introduction on my nursing career because most of the questions that I got are about my nursing stuff because that's like mostly what my content is about. I am 27 years old. I just turned 27 on September 30th. I am a Libra, which I'm not super into horoscopes, but I do feel like whenever I read a, like a horoscope about a Libra, I'm like, oh yeah, like that is me. I feel like that's everybody. But anyway, I have been a nurse since I was 20 years old. Um, so this is my seventh year of nursing experience, but I have been a nurse practitioner for one year and like three, four months now. Um, I went to the University of Tampa in Tampa, Florida, and I did a part-time program. It was eight semesters long. It took me two and a half years. And yeah, I graduated with my NP in August of 2022. I worked in GI for like six months, hated it, was not utilized as a nurse practitioner. So then I switched to primary care, um, which has its cons, but I've liked it way more. And yeah, that's where I work now. I work four 10 hour shifts a week. And yeah, I just started my own business with my friend for um, aesthetics because I've been doing aesthetics for like six months now as well at my primary care office, but um, we're doing a mobile Botox company. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. I'm married to my high school sweetheart. We've been together for, I've been together since 2012. So this is, it's been 11 years. Um, we got married in 2018, so we've been married for um, five years and we have two dogs. This dog here is Hoosier. My other dog camper is at the vet because he has had a cough for the last six weeks. He is in daycare so I thought that it was kennel cough but based on my research kennel cough only lasts for like three or four weeks so we're just getting him checked out at the vet and it's just me and Hoosier today. Hoosier is my first baby. He's four and he's the sweetest boy in the world, aren't you? Okay, let's get into the questions because I know you guys are probably bored of hearing me talk about myself. So, first question. Um, hello, sir. Come back up here. Come back up here. Sit down. Lay down. Good boy. All right, so first question is, which board exam did you take? I took the ANCC. So if you're not familiar with nurse practitioners, there are two exams. The ANCC is the American nurses credentialing center and the AANP, which is the American Academy of Nurse Practitioners. Um, it doesn't change your practice whatsoever, which board exam you take. ANCC has been around for the longest. University of Tampa had a 100% pass rate for the ANCC. Um, so I took that one, passed it on the first try. Um, a and P is only clinical questions. So I think that's why a lot of people have been going towards taking that and the ANCC can include non-clinical questions, but those non-clinical questions are so freaking easy. It's like, what type, sorry, what type of research is this? And it's it's dumb. So I feel like people stray away from the ANCC so much because they get scared of the non-clinical questions, but they're literally so easy. Okay, Libby Jeanette said, a PMHNP student, which is a, mental health nurse practitioner student graduating in May. Could you talk about board's process and their transition from RN to NP role? Very nervous for the higher responsibility. Um, so again, board process, I took the ANCC. I took it on September 7th. I graduated in August, maybe like 
August 14th or something like that. I studied for the exam for like three weeks. I did Sarah Michelle, um, her comprehensive review. I did not do the live review. I did her comprehensive review and I um, had the leak book, which I really loved the leak book. It's super simple and it has a bunch of questions in it. Um, so I studied for like three weeks, four to five days a week. I was only working PRN as a nurse. I was only working like one day a week at that time. And then, yeah, I just took it. Honestly, it was, I wouldn't be scared of nurse practitioner boards. If you can pass the NCLEX, you can pass the nurse practitioner boards. They're way easier than the NCLEX. The only thing about them is they are crazy long. So I think the ANCC is like 175 questions. Um, whereas like when I took the NCLEX, I had 75 questions and I was out of there. Um, so it's just, it's a mental process of like, how long can I sit here and read these questions, but it's really easy, honestly. About the transition from RN to NP, I feel like, I mean, the transition is gonna be hard in general. Like, it's a completely different role. Like, yes, the nurse practitioner role does feed off of the nursing role as far as like learning and growing in the healthcare field, but you have to have this mental switch um, from reporting symptoms and reporting, ow. <laughs> reporting, I'm sorry, this is going to be like so annoying, um, reporting conditions to now you are responsible for taking care of those conditions. So, um, it's not just like, oh, this is what's going on. It's like, what am I going to do about it? And honestly, it'll come with time and with practice. I had like a month of orientation at my primary care job and I had three months of orientation at my gastro job. So, if you get a good job, they're going to give you plenty of orientation time and you should start out with less complex patients in general just out of good practice. So don't worry. Like I know that's like cliche to say, but you'll figure it out. You you really will. All right. Lainey said I graduate with my MSN on December 15th and taking the AANP soon. Advice for new graduate NPs. How do you balance working as an NP as well as socials? So my advice for new graduate NPs would be to either get an up-to-date subscription that you pay for yourself or find a job that pays for an up-to-date subscription. Up-to-date is my Bible. I use it every day. You get CEUs, which are needed to renew your license. Um, yeah, I use it all the time. And then you're, when you first start out, you're going to be on up to date. You're going to be like after work looking up things constantly. And as you get more comfortable in your practice, you will get away from that because you will feel confident in the diagnosis and the treatments. Um, but know that that's completely normal at first. Find a good like few handbooks that you like. One that I use all the time is the primary care pocket pocket book or pocket notebook um, so get good references and look up a bunch of stuff ask a bunch of questions be okay with asking questions that's what that's what it's about growing in the healthcare field is asking a bunch of questions and researching answers so that would be my advice for that as far as how I balance um, working as an NP and doing socials I don't know if I have a good balance to it I mean I work like 10 11 hours and if I haven't filmed a TikTok, I, you know, I post a TikTok every day, then I will be like, well, I'm going to film like an evening vlog tonight because I haven't filmed one today. Or a lot of times I will film stuff in the morning. If I have, um, if I'm super motivated, I will film a bunch of stuff on like a Monday, um, when I'm working like Tuesday through Friday, and then I'll have some stuff to post ahead. But honestly, that doesn't happen very often. So yeah, I'll, I'm, I work a ton. If I'm being completely honest, I get off of work, I come home, I cook dinner, I'm filming a TikTok, then I'm editing that TikTok. Um, I'm also most likely simultaneously filming a YouTube video and I edit all my YouTube videos on the weekends, post them on Sundays or Mondays typically. And yeah, I'm working all the time. Now that I have the Globe Art business, I'm working for that. But yeah, I don't know. I just feel like I'm 27 right now. I I'm, I don't like hustle culture, but like I don't have kids. I I like, I really, really enjoy the social parts. I really enjoy working for myself as far as business-wise. So it doesn't feel as much like work for me. Oh my God, my nose is itching. I've been sick for like a week and a half, you guys. I'm over here, down over here. 
You got it. Our friend is leaving us. Do not bark. A user with a long, a long number has commented fitness and nutrition. Um, I feel like you guys have probably been able to tell that I, I have been looking very fit recently, which feels very good for me. I've been working a long time towards this. Um, but I follow a plant-based diet. I have been plant-based for seven years, eight years. I've been plant-based since 2016. Um, I was like full onset, completely vegan until up until this year, honestly. And I don't really label myself as vegan anymore because sometimes like if something, if a bakery item that somebody brought to me at work has eggs in it, like I will eat it. Um, or like sometimes I will order like fun drinks from Starbucks that have are made with dairy So I just kind of felt like I was getting super restrictive with the vegan diet and I wasn't like I just wanted to be able to like try pumpkin cream cold brew to be completely honest um, So yeah, I eat 100% plant-based at home. I eat 100% plant-based like at restaurants um, It's just like the occasional like if somebody brings me something. Okay, so I've been eating like that forever and I feel really good on that diet. I feel good morally. I feel good um, just in general. And I grew up, my mom was vegetarian growing up. So I feel like I've always been kind of used to eating more plants and like fake meat type of stuff. I don't eat a ton of fake meat, but um, as far as, uh, sorry, not nutrition, diet, I have also been exercising since the Wii Fit came out, to be completely honest. I remember asking for the Wii Fit for Christmas when I was, I don't know, 10, and I got it, and that introduced me to exercise. I'm so grateful that I got that for Christmas. Um, I haven't always been, like, lifting weights or anything like that. But I've always exercised, literally since I was 10 years old, I would get some form of daily activity. I just have always had the foresight that I needed to be active in my life. So it was either doing like the Wii Fit or going for walks or runs. Um, I did a lot of exercise videos when I was younger. And in the last, probably since college, so I guess I've been out of college. No, I started college in 2014, so I guess it's almost been... 10 years of lifting weights but this year I really switched from lifting lighter and doing more reps to lifting heavier and doing less reps and that has changed my physique a hundred percent um I do loosely follow the Whitney Simmons exercise app called Alive um I am like I like it, but I don't like it because sometimes it feels a bit repetitive or sometimes I just don't like the exercises that she recommends. I think it's a great app though. Some stuff I'm just like, I if I do another hip thrust, I'm gonna die. It's just like little things like that. Like I hate hip thrust. <laughs> I hate certain exercises. So I do loosely follow that, um, but I do much less reps than she recommends. So she always recommends anywhere from like eight to 10 and I find myself doing four and she always does three sets of stuff. Um, maybe the first set of an exercise she recommends doing four sets, but I do four sets of six to eight reps if I'm doing one exercise. And then if I'm doing um, what we call a superset, it's like, what do we call it? A superset, I do three sets. So a superset is when you do two exercises that are working like the same muscle group, one after the other without a rest. Um, I'll do that like three times and still do like heavy weights and that completely changed my physique, I swear. Um, Madison Butts asks, how is the job process as a new NP? Like, did you start working during credentialing or what was the time? Yes, um, for each of my jobs, I have started working before I became fully credentialed. Most jobs will hire you as a nurse and train you to be a nurse practitioner while the credentialing process is going through. If you are working for a really large healthcare system, the credentialing process takes forever because they have a hundred hands in the bucket trying to get you credentialed. Whereas I now work for a private practice, it maybe took them like two weeks, three weeks to get me fully credentialed. Um, and during that time, I was just seeing patients with another NP. So um, usually places are really good about that and they'll hire you before the credentialing process is complete. I feel like so many people wanted to talk, wanted me to talk about my experience with boards. Victoria Preston said, can you talk about your experience taking boards? It was honestly like, it was easy. Like I'm, I'm being completely honest with you. Do not stress about the NP boards. They are so easy compared to the nursing boards. Um, and I think it, I really do think it should be opposite, but that's just life. Also, 
at least for me, when I became a registered nurse, I had zero healthcare experience. So everything on the boards was like, I was thinking through it so much because I didn't know, you know, I had never worked in healthcare before. So I also feel like the exposure to healthcare has made nurse practitioner boards seem so easy. Um, but yeah, that, that was it. Maddie asks, what's your balance like with working out, food, etc.? I feel like I kind of already answered that. Um, I do work out. I do four lifting days in the gym. So I do two leg days. One is hamstring focused, one is glute focused. And then I do two upper body days. One is back and biceps and the other is chest, triceps, and a little bit of shoulders. I have a left shoulder injury that I've had for 10 years. I've never gotten it checked out or anything. So I don't do a ton of shoulder exercises because my left shoulder can't handle it. Um, but yeah, and then I do some other type of exercise once a week. So right now I'm doing yoga. Um, I did Pilates for like six months and then kind of got bored of it. Um, during the winter time, it's actually really nice in Florida. So I'll do like a long bike ride once a week. My husband and I will go on like a 10 mile bike ride. I just live a very active lifestyle. I walk my dogs every night. Um, so I just try to be active. Advice for picking your new grad job, your first new grad job. Sarah Bugby asked that. I'm guessing you are, I don't know if you're asking about nurse it, a nursing job versus an NP job, um, but I would say trust your gut. <laughs> like really trust your gut. That is not something that I did in my first job. I was desperate almost in a way. I was just so desperate to start working and stop being a nurse that I kind of jumped on the first opportunity that I had, to be honest. I had two job opportunities and one was with a cardiologist and I was gonna have to travel really far. And the other was with um, GI and they paid me more. And even though I didn't really wanna do GI, I was like, this just like, I just want to be a nurse practitioner. I don't wanna be a nurse anymore. So trust your gut, make sure that they will train you. Um, after your interview, I would highly suggest asking if you could like interview or talk with other mid-levels or whatever, APPs, whatever you want to call them in the practice just to like catch a vibe. I know that sounds stupid, but um, yeah, that would be my advice for that. Annie Michelle asks, I finished NP school in five months and you're my inspo. That's nice. What did you study? What did you do to study for boards and how did you get a job lined up before graduation? Um, so again, I did Sarah Michelle comprehensive review and the leak book and I just started applying to jobs Honestly the same month that I graduated because most of the time when you're applying to a job a job They ask you if you are a nurse practitioner a certified nurse practitioner and you have to put no if you haven't graduated or passed boards and that's like gonna immediately take you out from the job market like if you're on Indeed, they're just gonna like take you out your resume is not even going to get shown to the company you're applying for so don't apply for jobs too early would be my advice advice for a high schooler that wants to become an np that's from ainsley okay well you got to be a nurse first so go to college to be a nurse work as a nurse and then go to nurse practitioner school shadow a nurse shadow an np see if that's something that you really want to do and don't just do it for a couple of hours do it for a full day um, because working in healthcare is really freaking hard. Do Jenny asks, do clinicals help with NP imposter syndrome? I start clinical soon, but still feel clueless. Like, how will I actually treat people? Um, a hundred percent. I didn't know anything until I started NP clinicals, and even the first NP clinical, I was so lost. Um, I would say probably about a month into it, I started to like get my grips and understand things. But that's completely normal. It's like. It's like doing your didactic work in nursing school before your clinicals and you get to the floor and you're like The only thing I know how to do is take vital signs like How do I clinically think? Um, you still you have to learn that clinical reasoning and the clinical thinking as a nurse practitioner as well And you will learn it in your clinicals. I promise you okay, next question Karen said starting as a new grad primary NP Do you have a binder with resources you use at work like protocols diagnosis labs love your content? I don't have a binder that I use. I, I use up to date, hundred percent. I use <laughs> up to date and then I have specific links or specific um, diagno diagnostic algorithms favorited to my computer on up to date. I'm telling you up to date is all you need. Megan Ellis Ray said workout routine plus nutrition with working in healthcare long shifts and days. Um, 
so my advice for like if you are a nurse do not you do not need to go to the gym after you've worked a 12 hour shift i am not advocating for that in any way um, but you do need to take care of yourself on your days off so if that's going to the gym or if it's going to workout class or if it's doing something outside um, you need to do that not only for your body but for your mental health getting like outside of your house on your days off whether you're a nurse whether you're a respiratory therapist like whatever you do in healthcare, like you need to leave your house on your days off i truly believe that because you will get depressed if you sit in your house for too long trust me one of my biggest other like advice would be to meal prep I got cut off, but I was saying that I feel like when I was working as a nurse, nobody brought their lunch or their breakfast. They would always just go to the cafeteria and get like something from Chick-fil-A or then grab something for lunch. And honestly, like I don't mean to be like the health police, but that's so bad for you. <laughs> Personally felt like I never want to be what my patients are, especially in the hospital. And I worked on a cardiac floor, so most of the time, you know, it was overweight, hypertensive, you know, smoking, poor diet, not getting any exercise, that type of thing. Um, I never, ever once have eaten in the cafeteria at any of my nursing jobs. I think a lot of that had to do with me being a uh, vegan as well. I, I couldn't. They didn't have anything for me to eat, but also just I thought it was disgusting. So pack your lunch. Pack your freaking lunch. Pack your breakfast. Pack snacks. Um, take care of yourself, like take care of yourself, <laughs> please. The hospital food, don't eat it, it's gross. I'm sorry, that's my rant done with. Tiffany asked, she is a, a pediatric NP student, advice on finding preceptors and the board's process. For preceptors, my biggest advice would be to get into a large healthcare system or not, or a large office, and if your school is okay with it, just literally f rotate around preceptors in that office, that's what I did. Um, I got one person to take me and then I switched to somebody else the next semester and then I switched to somebody else the next semester and then I switched to somebody else the next semester um, and it worked out great and it was super easy and I was not stressing about finding a preceptor. Hannah Schaefer said, do you have any sort of faith that you ascribe to? I thought that was an interesting question. Not interesting, but just something that I wanted to answer. So I was raised in the Seventh-day Adventist faith, which if you're not familiar with Seventh-day Adventist, basically we believe that the seventh day is the Sabbath, which is Saturday, not Sunday. And there's a few other differences in beliefs. Like we don't believe that people go to heaven when they die. We b believe that they are going to sleep in Jesus. And then when he comes back for the resurrection, they will be resurrected at that time and we'll all be together. Um, there's what other things. They also are just like very conservative and that they don't believe in like sex before marriage or living together before marriage um i'm trying to think of other things yeah and then i think the other biggest thing that some Adventists like sets them aside is saturday is the biggest day saturday is our sabbath um because of like the seventh day is the sabbath of the lord your god <laughs> commandment and so yeah saturday like growing up was a a day like where we didn't go out to eat on Saturdays we went to church we had friends over we would hang out like at my pool or at the beach because I grew up like um, on a nice little like beach area but yeah we didn't go out to eat until the sunset and then we didn't do like we wouldn't buy things on Saturday those are the biggest differences now I still do consider myself Seventh-day Adventist like um, I really do believe in those doctrines like Seventh-day Adventism really does follow the Bible which I believe is a hundred percent if you are following another Religion that their belief system is not rooted in the Bible, but in other prophets or other things. I'm, I don't quite understand that um, But now since moving to Florida, honestly, my husband and I have not found a church that we liked here we had a really great one in Chattanooga, Tennessee and so I have I still do believe that stuff I really do I just haven't been like in my church era if you will like I don't go to church on Saturdays I don't necessarily keep it as holy as like I should but yeah I still do consider myself to be somewhat religious sorry about that I had to talk to my vet for my dog I think I have two more questions so Courtney Casey asks, I do really well in clinicals, but I struggle with the classroom content. I'm not a book smart person. Any tips? Um, my tip for you would be if you know that this is not 
your strongest point, then you're gonna have to put more work into the book smart stuff uh, or the book studying. I always recommend reverse learning, which is very hard to do in NP school to be completely honest, because a lot of times you're juggling way more than just school. Uh, kids, husband, bills, um, which I know people do in nursing school too, but wasn't my experience in nursing school. But reverse learning is basically where you look over the information in class prior to going to class, and then you use class review source, and then, yeah, that's how it works. I hate it, hate it, hate it. I posted something on TikTok about this, and people were like, what if your professor doesn't, like, release the PowerPoints or the information prior to like the week of class and I'm like you get a syllabus everybody it's required for schools to give you a syllabus of what you're learning each week so even if there's no PowerPoint link to it I know that they gave you a book that you were supposed to buy <laughs> read the section in the book that corresponds <laughs> like I don't know anyway that would be my advice for you Courtney also remember you just have to pass you don't have to get an A you do not have to slay the classroom aspect in order to pass and be a good NP. Okay, last question is from primarily PA. How do you take on the leader role in the office as an NP? Um, this is something that I struggle with and that I've always struggled with because I'm always the youngest wherever I am. Um, like I was passing out narcotics at 20 years old as a nurse before I could even legally consume alcohol. Um, and then I'm, I'm always, I was the youngest nurse practitioner student in my class. Um, and now I'm the youngest NP at my practice, but I've been there for the longest besides like the, the lead NP. And I feel like it's just something that you rise to. You just do it. Like you just adapt because you have to. Um, but I also do feel like with experience comes knowing what it is to be a good leader and i have had so many bad leaders that i know what i'm looking for in a leader so i'm looking for somebody who not just says that they will help me but will actually jump in and help me um, i'm looking for somebody who is empathetic and just all talk and no action who is all action and no talk i don't like egos in the workplace i don't like people who cannot keep their word. So I think it's all about knowing what type of leader you prefer to have in your workplace and then just being that leader. So um, it's really important to me to be kind to everybody that I work with, especially my MA, my front desk, because they can either make my life a living hell or they can make it really great. Um, they have complete control over my schedule more than I even have because I don't even know how to schedule a patient. So I think it's all about kindness and empathy and connecting to the people that you work with. That's all I have for that. Anyway, um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you guys some clarity and I'll, I will do like more Q and A's. I know that I do get a lot of DMs on Instagram and on TikTok. And to be honest, just with how much stuff I have going on, um, I don't, prioritize answering them. Sometimes I get to them, sometimes I, and most of the time I don't, to be completely honest. Um, so yeah, I will do these more often so it feels like more of a conversation and where I'm helping more people than just one person. Um, because if you have the question, there's a high likelihood that a lot of other people have that question. So yeah, I hope that helped and I hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving week. I'm so incredibly grateful for all of you guys for caring about my life, subscribing to my channels, um, and yeah, just taking interest in me and the healthcare field and nurse practitioners. And yeah, I wish you guys a very merry holiday season, officially Merry Christmas, and I will see you guys next week. Bye guys.